popular thousand pound gorilla in this ecosystem. Docker has their swarm mode as well. This is going to give you the high availability. There's no point in securing an environment if one node, one container goes down, your whole environment's dead. You know, that's, if you're unavailable, that's not a good, good place to be. This also manages your deployments. This forces everything, if you start going through this pattern, that every change goes through a rolling update, goes through some kind of change, like a blue-green change, something like that, to deploy your applications. More importantly, CI-CD. Um, I didn't talk about earlier from the Docker socket standpoint, the tooling out there to limit what users can do to the socket's really awesome, but in, I would say, 90% of the environments I touch, no users anywhere get direct access to the Docker socket. It all goes through some kind of build server. It's all the CI CD system that's building this stuff, the popular one out there, Jenkins, although I hate it. Um, you do all your automation through there. If that environment is doing all the builds, all the workflows, and nobody is manually touching the final production environment, not only does that reduce your risk because you don't have people man manually tweaking things, you eliminate a lot of the state trip that goes on. You eliminate the stuff where you have a server that's been out there for three years that nobody knows how it's built because people have been going in and tweaking stuff by hand. If every change is going through your change control, you've now eliminated that. All right, last three bullets in here are kind of monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. But metrics out there, this is going to give you the number of packets going in and out. This is going to tell you when you're being DDoSed so that you're aware that something's happening. The logging, everything needs to get off, offloaded. If your logs are simp sitting with just the container, when the container goes away, you no longer have your logs. That's a bad thing if you're trying to look at what happened later on. So you offload your logs to a central server. Splunk is the big cloud one. Elastic is the one most people run in-house. And you just move all your logs from the container off to that. And there are various porters out there, a lot of solutions to implement that. Last on the list, kind of the newcomer on the block here is tracking. Open tracing is the protocol they're using. And there are a bunch of implementations on top of that. One of them is Jaeger. Um, it's kind of one of the popular ones. This gives you, from a developer standpoint, if you're used to looking at a network waterfall graph in a browser, if you're looking at from the developer tools in a browser, you see the waterfall graph of this, this call resulted in pulling down this page, but then resulted in pulling down this JavaScript and all that stuff. This does the same thing at a microservice level. So from the server side, this request came into our server, that thing called this other microservice, that thing called this other microservice, and you can see that flow graph going through, and you see three layers down that you hit a 503, and now you know where to fix your problem. So you can work through that way with this visibility. Without that, I think the, um, the famous tweet out there was that we switched to microservices so that every outage became a murder mystery. And uh, we don't want that. We, we want to make this stuff visible. So that's where the tracing helps out a lot. If I haven't given you enough tools already, CNCF, I hope everybody in the front row has binoculars to be able to see this. Um, they've got this giant chart of all kinds of tools out there. There's a whole ecosystem of stuff to work with containers. Yeah, zooming in on the picture there, I don't think it's going to work. But the CNCF has a full interactive landscape out there. All right. But the important part of this isn't all the tools. We've got a million and one tools out there. we got tools out the wazoo because containers are the new hot, fun thing on the block. I, I really want to stress, don't skip the basics. Use a trusted base image. Don't pick the random JDK image that you saw in some blog post that so-and-so wrote three years ago and has been sitting up on the Docker Hub that might be vulnerable to run your production environment in a Fortune 500. I can't believe I'm saying that it's actually been the case, um, in addition to running their Jenkins on the public internet. And yeah, bad times. Um, minimal images. We saw the most minimal of all was the scratch. Um, if you can't get that far, at least pick the minimal image for your environment. So find something out there that works for whatever you're running, and then run your code as a user, not as a root user, but as a regular non-privileged user. And then if you can, switch to a read-only file system. There's some tricks that go through if you don't know what files your application is writing. You can run your application inside of a container without the read-only file system, and you can tell Docker to give you a diff on the container, and it will tell you every file that changed in that container. And so now you can go through afterwards and say, OK, all these things in here, I need to either make it a volume, or I need to make it a tempfs, or something in there to keep track of that. And the whole rest of the file system can now be changed to read only. And so you can lock this thing down. You can use the Docker tooling to make this a really easy thing to simplify for you. And then patch. Please patch. Um, containers make this incredibly easy, so just do it. Um, download newer images. I go into clients. I'll set them up on day one. I'll have the scripts to download the newer images from the Docker Hub. So they get updates. I'll have all this stuff in there. I'll come back a year later. They've turned it all off. They're still running on the image that I left at because they didn't want to change anything. I'm like, no, please, just patch. Um, 
I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. And lastly, protect that API. Don't let anybody in the world touch it. If you can, lock it down so that it's just the CI CD system, something like that running, and not every user in the world talking to it. So that's what I've got. Might have a few minutes here for questions. All these slides are up online. Um, you can fire that QR code up, and that will take you there if you trust random QR codes from people that you haven't met before. If you don't, that GitHub link is good. Sudo bmich is what happens when they took my username, and I had to find a better way to get the username I wanted. Um, whole presentation repo over there. It's got this and other ones, so if you really like stuff on Docker, it's all Docker presentations. So that's what I got. Questions? Momentarily. The B-Sides Nova 2019 will begin momentarily.